Good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we are now a small group of people, but still we are here and we will talk uh, once more about uh, the career and the professional career of one of our alumni. My name is Berta and um, I coordinate the alumni program at eBay. And uh, I want to inform you that this is a program uh, which uh, it was launched in September and with uh, the aim of uh, trying to share and uh, uh, professional experiences uh, among all graduates and uh, to make the first step to interact and to connect and to make a small network maybe of uh, um, different uh, uh, people who are interested in the same field. Uh, today, um, we have Cynthia um, with us. She uh, will uh, talk from Germany. And uh, I, don't, I, I don't want to extend, uh, uh, I, I don't want to, I mean, to, I would like to, to give the floor to her because I think that she has uh, really interesting uh, things to explain to us. Uh, so please uh, welcome all and thank you for uh, your presentation. And uh, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Berta. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you at eBay uh, virtually and after so many years. Um, I think I'm going to try to share my presentation now. So I've named my presentation, There is no map. Uh, and I wish and I try to organize it in a way that I would love to have heard when I was in the beginning of my career and the kind of very honest talk that I think that is necessary when we are building a, a professional uh, road. And the thing that it make that it that I reflect upon uh, while thinking on okay, so what could I bring to this presentation to talk to other people that are in the field of international relations? Is it I thought, okay, this the one thing that I've been doing ever since I left eBay and even before that is reinventing. You need to reinvent in a career in international relations. Um, so my background is I'm Brazilian. I had a BA, a Bachelor in International Relations, which was followed by the Master of Arts from eBay, also International Relations. And then I did a Master of Science and a PhD in Society Development and International Cooperation, which is a multidisciplinary program in the University of Brasilia, and it has a focus on public policy. Professionally, I've worked with uh, human resources management, in more so in the side of management, um, specifically uh, with project management, and more recently in the higher education area, especially internationalization of higher education. Hobbies, like everybody, I like to watch my fair share of series on Netflix and movies and to read literature, walk, go on long walks, and I think like most people on this field, to travel. Um, so <clears throat> who I am in the face of all of that? I am a Brazilian right now who is in the middle of Germany, in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I see myself both as a manager uh, of projects and public policy, but also as a young career researcher uh, in the fields of international higher education and public policy. And that's not exactly easy uh, to, to put out there in terms of a career trajectory, because in many times these different characteristics and these different roles collide and they may seem that they just don't fit and there is no job description that says, hey, I'm looking for somebody who's a manager and who's also a young career researcher. It's either you are one thing or you are the other. And at first there is this uh, false idea that you maybe you can't be both. But I see myself and I identify myself with both things. So I decided to just go with it. Um, so there is why there is no map. Who, who you are, what you are as somebody in the international relations uh, career or track career or who's pursuing 
um, master international relations or might even be already working a little bit on the field. Mostly we are generalists and there's close to non-job description for international relations for somebody that, okay, so here we're a graduate of international relations, I'd love to have you. Usually there is a profile there that is very interesting and that's a profile that shows itself depending on what you like and the choices that you have. Um, and like I said, it all depends a little bit on what you want. And usually when people uh, put these talks, I've seen there's a lot of, oh, how to succeed in a career uh, ending with international organizations or how to succeed in a career as, I don't know, a diplomat or et cetera, et cetera. And for me, it was sometimes hard to listen to those talks because I never really had a clear idea of what was my main goal. What did I want? Okay, I want to be this thing. I, know, I knew that I liked public policy. I knew, I knew that I liked to manage things. I knew that I liked, that I liked to study and I, and I was very interested in the world. And so for me, it was not really clear. And I think it's okay that you don't have a clear destination, but that maybe you know a little bit of the things that you are interested at. Um, so why should you draw then your own map? I think, first of all, it comes from a personal choice, like I said. And second, it varies a lot according to the country you are coming from to the country that you are aiming at. And also if you are not considering a country in a specific, but you are considering an international career. And that's why I say that sometimes the maps draws itself because things just kind of come together at, at a certain point. What are the threats or difficulties that I think that you can encounter in this process? Comparing yourself to others is for sure one of the easiest traps on the way because you will probably have a lot of different people around you with very different profiles. I remember that from my time at eBay. It was uh, a really great experience for me. We were a very diverse group from with people from all around the world. And sometimes it feels a little bit intimidating. Like for example, we organized a student round where we would share our professional experiences. And of course that I, I was much younger then and my experiences were much more limited. And um, I, I had colleagues that were, that worked for, that were journalists and had cover, I don't know, part of the war in Lebanon. I had colleagues that had worked very close with the humanitarian relief. I had colleagues, so I had a variety of colleagues with such a rich experience. And sometimes I looked around and it was like, okay, am I even good enough compared to these people? And that's not a very good way to go. I would say it's important to focus and focus in a sense that, okay, it's nice to have people around you with different backgrounds and experiences, but you should focus on the things that you can take from these experiences. It's, oh, that's interesting that he did this this way. Maybe I could try this way, uh, but mostly try to build what your own ideas and your own interests from that. Jumping would be something that it's kind of difficult and I would say it's a threat because uh, it's very easy to be interested in many things. And for example, start a job and then from that job, see something else that's really interesting and kind of be from one thing to the other. And my experiences so far tells me that it's, it's very important to be able to show that you can stay in a position within a certain role for a little bit of time because it, it, it builds something solid on your work story. And of course, the generality of IR as a field is, of, is, 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 it can be considered as a strength, but also as a huge threat and difficulty because all of a sudden it's too broad and it's very hard 
to become into this focus that you want to achieve. So I would say for that, uh, an interesting way to respond is to keep improving your qualifications, which is what I try to do in terms of, I didn't stop on, on my master's at, the, at eBay. I just, I keep moving further on that sense and that really helped. Where can you find work if you want to make a career in the field that I've been working? So I've stated before that I see myself both as, an, as a manager and a young career researcher in the field of um, higher education, especially in internationalization of higher education, because that influences a lot on what I see um, in places where I can apply the competences that I've been developing uh, over the last years. Of course, there are spaces and places in private institutions, and private institutions will vary a lot uh, from country to country. And also, if you're looking at an international focus, you can try consultancy roles. Uh, universities are a huge field, uh, depending on the countries that you're coming from. And that also varies a lot in Brazil uh, to have space to work at a university doing what I do. You would, you would probably have to go through public examinations and it's a career that's a little bit different unless you're going to the pri to private universities, which is also a possibility. You can be, you can work, for example, in an international office of a university. That applies also when you look at the European reality or even more so uh, at the American reality or if you look uh, at Australia and and that's also beginning to be the norm in Asia, I would say. Um, foundations are also a, a huge field to work with management inside in the area of science and higher, ed higher education. Um, and of course, universities associations, which are something else entirely. I, I began my career in this field specifically working at a university association in Brazil coordinating international cooperation projects. So from that, I was able to move to a public agency and and then come to Germany to do the work that I'm doing now, which is mostly research associated. Uh, so I'm, I'm saying that because that's also a building block that is possible, university associations. Within public institutions, I remain, again, it's very interesting to, to focus on that, it will vary a lot in terms of countries. Um, so you should really look into the country that you're interested in and see what are the the prerequisites, what are the things that are being asked of you. And in that sense, you can look at foundations, public agencies, ministries even, uh, research institutions, obviously, especially when after pursuing a master's uh, of arts, you continue on building on research, maybe you were part of a research team, or maybe at some point uh, you decided to pursue a Master of Science or even to begin a PhD. So research institutes and think tanks are also another way that you can look at, and especially as a young career researcher. And international organizations are, I think, is what people that come from the field of international relations think. It's, it's the, the things that come to mind, firstly. And in that sense, in the area of international education, UN and its agencies, UNESCO, I've been a consultant with UNESCO about some years back, uh, the European Union, for those who are Europeans and um, and can work, and that's, that's something that actually broadens your possibilities a lot. Uh, depending on your nationality, you will be able to participate in different institutions. For example, I couldn't work directly at the European Union as a Brazilian, but I had the chance to do an internship at the Organization of American States in the uh, in Washington, D.C., and that's an organization that is devoted for people from the Americas in general. So each and every continent will uh, offer you different possibilities in terms of where you can work at. Um, so some interesting sources to look at, I would say in terms of Twitter account, account I posted two here. Um, recently, I, I began to participate on a network 
of young career researchers in higher education. And that has been an incredible experience. It's open for everybody that's uh, considered itself as a young career researcher in this field and wants to participate. Uh, their Twitter account is Azure uh, um, underline net. They have all sorts of tips on how to build your career on as a young career researcher, the difficulties. They have a super interesting blog that will give all of the building blocks on how can you advance on a career in science if you are coming from the field of um, international education and also education in general in a, a broader sense. And Angel Tenders is a very interesting Twitter account as well. It mostly posts job opportunities at NGOs and they are very up to date. So every day they post something different. So it's really nice to look into that if you're looking for a job in this field. I, um, for the last year, I've been uh, following on the DUS publications. It's um, scientific uh, management a uh, magazine here in Germany that is focused on, on the management of science. It's published mostly in German, but it has a part that is also in English. It's it's a very interesting publication, and I, I would say that is a must-have and a must-read if you are working in this field in Germany, where I am at the moment. And I think professional career reps, uh, LinkedIn is the first thing that comes to mind. I have some issues with LinkedIn. I think it's it's much more interesting in terms of connecting to people professionally, but it hasn't resulted for me in terms of um, job opportunities as much. Uh, but it, it works differently from to from people to from person to person. Uh, if you are interested in working in Germany in this in the area of higher education, uh, I would struggle strongly advise you to look into the site. Stellenmarkt. Uh, I just I posted there the address. It's where you have uh, most of the jobs within universities, within think tanks, within uh, foundations, everything related to science management, to higher education. That's where you find the jobs. And Glassdoor is also a very interesting website. It has different pages according to country, so it makes it even more interesting, and you can see um salaries and that's interesting for for example for me that coming from a brazilian reality where that's not something that we are asked up front usually the salary is is given and we either accept it or not and here in europe i i realize that, that that's something that it can be the case but it varies and sometimes you have to say oh i i was aiming for us for to to earn this much and glass door kind of helps in that sense. And of course, international organizations' websites and universities' websites. There are a lot of opportunities there too. And I would strongly, um, I'd strongly advise that you keep looking and you keep just going into all of this, um, these networks and these possibilities. I'm finishing up my time here in Germany. Um, I, I came here, I, maybe I should have said that <laughs> at the beginning, but I came here on a fellowship, on an extent of a Humboldt fellowship, uh, that it's for young career managers, mostly. And it's a recognition of work that, you, that you've been developing on your country. And the idea is a lot to provide connections between five specific countries, which are Brazil, Russia, the United States, China, and India and uh, Germany. And it, it, it was a wonderful year. I've learned a lot. I've even learned to speak German, German, which was a big challenge, but the fellowship helped a lot in that sense. And uh, next year, I'll be moving along to another challenge. And I just got the news, like just today. And I'll be coordinating a new project. Um, also here in Germany, and that's the job that I found uh, through the Zeitstellenmarkt, like I said. So what I try to bring, and I'm closing with that, my talk, so that we can maybe explore other avenues of talking uh, while
we start on our, our more informal format with the questions and question and answers part. What I really want to convey, and I close with that, is that some just there is no map in a career in international relations. You may uh, try to focus in terms of organizations, or you may try to focus on an area, but sometimes the focus just shows itself. Sometimes the focus will will come as you are advancing and you don't really know where your career will lead you, where your next step will be. I started my career in Brazil. I went through a wonderful year in Spain. That gave me the, that opened a door for me to have an opportunity in the US. I came back to Brazil, uh, was lost for a little while, found my way back. And I could never thought if you told me a couple of years ago, Cynthia, you'll be living in Germany, I would probably laugh at your face and say, oh, please, that's never going to happen. And it just things just happen. And the important thing is that you keep yourself up to date and you keep looking and you keep uh, your eyes open for new opportunities. Thank you very much.